have come a long way in my personal journey to learn how to use the GemCut Studio or GCS software. And I've shared my journey with you about learning all about GCS in this GCS tutorial series. I am at the point now where I'm pretty comfortable in using the basics of GCS, um, either to evaluate a gem cutting design before I use the design to cut a gemstone, or to see if the design could be tweaked slightly to improve the brightness of the gemstone that I'm going to cut, or to optimize the design to cut a different type of gem material than the design might have been created for. However, I'm in no way an expert on GCS and have a long way to go before I would consider myself an expert. So in this video, I'm going to show you just one small feature of GCS that I've learned about. Just another small tool in the GCS toolbox that you can use to improve your gem cutting or gem designs. I'm going to show you the GCS frosted feature. I want to frost some facets in GCS to observe the effects that frosting has on a computer-generated computer gemstone. And separately, I will in the near future cut this design to see how the final gemstone or gemstones actually look with frosted facets. I believe, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but GCS is the first gem design CAD program which has a feature to frost facets and show you how the final stone should look with the frosted facets. First off, I will need a design to illustrate the frosted feature of GCS. And while looking through one of the largest, if not the largest databases of gem cutting designs, um, which can be found at facetdiagrams.org on the web, I came across a design called Excalibur that I want to cut. It is file PC 28229 and it was created by Fan Tran Trung who is a Facebook friend of mine. Fan has designed a large number of gem cutting diagrams most of which involved frosted facets. Now a lot of Fan's designs are not in the public domain so you would have to contact him, Facebook's a good way, if you are interested in his designs which are not publicly available. However, Fan did release Excalibur into the public domain so you can cut this stone. I did reach out to Fan and told him I would like to cut this design and he told me that the design works on all kinds of gems but he personally recommended I cut this design in either the quartz family, namely citrines, or a dark garnet. Well, as luck would have it, I have some citrine rough as well as way too much dark garnet rough. So in the near future, I'll cut this design for you so we can see how it turns out. I would also mention that you can learn all about Fan as not too long ago, he was interviewed by Justin Prim. Now, Justin is a fellow gem cutter who has undertaken the monumental task of documenting the history of faceting and has interviewed a number of really, really great cutters and designers in the gem cutting community. Justin is an amazing person um, as he is a lapidary historian, a gem cutter, a faceting instructor, and a lecturer, all rolled into one person. I would recommend you visit his YouTube page as it would take too long for me to explain all the great work Justin has done within the gem cutting community. And the YouTube interview between Justin and Fan um, is called Gem Cutting Conversations Fan Tran Trung. So step one is to save the file from the facetdesigns.org um, database into my gem cut studio software into a file called designs. I showed you how to do this in one of the first videos in this tutorial series, so I won't cover that again here. But facetdiagrams.org files have the extension of a .asc, which GCS can read and open. Um, once I have the ASC file saved into my GCS folder, I simply open it, and when I save it again, which I'll do after putting all the facets into it, or frosting all the facets into it, then GCS will convert the file into a .gcs extension, which is the GCS format. So the Excalibur file on the screen right now is the .asc file from facetdiagrams.org. So first I will open the render screen and change the gem material to pyrope garnet so you can more easily see the effect of frosting 
in GCS on a computer-generated gemstone. And also, since I plan to cut this design in dark garnet in the near future, it'll help me see what the gemstone should look like after I cut it. For Excalibur, the .asc file does not have any of the facets frosted. This is because the best software before GCS did not have a frosting feature. The .asc file does have notes from Fran instructing the cutter on which facets to frost. Um, now that I have Excalibur open in GCS, I need to actually frost the facets in GCS. And here is how you frost a facet. You can see from the cutting instructions which row, which rows are to be frosted. They are all on the crown, and it's uh, instructions C2, C4, C6, C7, C8, and C9. They're all to be frosted. You can see these rows or tiers of which facets to frost on this diagram, which shows how the crown should look once cut. The first row or tier of facets that the instructions tell us to frost are C2. So first, let's go to the design and move our computer gemstone um, with our mouse so that we can see the top of the gemstone where the sword is. Now highlight C2 in the instructions, uh, go to frosted in the bottom of the screen and select frosted. Note how these facets now show up very clearly in our render box as frosted. Also note that our C2 line of instruction how the facets have a different background than all the other facets. And this indicates that they're now frosted. And finally, in our design box, the frosted fa facets have dots in them, indicating, again, that they're frosted. Now highlight C4 in the instructions. Go to frosted in the bottom of the screen and select frosted again. Again, note the changes to our render box also in the design box, as well as our instructions. All are ways that uh, GCS tells you that these facets are to be are frosted. Now we'll highlight the C6 in the instructions, and as before, select frosted. And again, note the changes in the render box, the design box, and the instructions box, all indicating the facets are to be frosted. Now highlight C7 in the instructions. Again, select Frosted at the bottom of the screen and look at the render box, the design box, and because they're now, our sword is taking, taking shape. Now highlight C8 in the instructions and again, select Frosted. And you can see in the render box that the sword is almost complete because of the frosted facets. Finally, Highlight the C9 in the instructions and select Frosted. You can see now that our completed Ex Excalibur sword is in the render box. And we have frosted all the necessary facets on this gemstone. And you can get a visual example of how the final stone should look when you cut the gemstone and frost the necessary facets. Now I will save the file off screen so it will have a GCS extension and so that I have all the frosted facets saved. So in this video, I showed you a powerful tool that GCS has, the frosting feature. And I used an old design which told you in the instructions how to frost, or which facets to frost, but did not have them frosted in the, in the software because the software at that time didn't have the capability of showing you frosted facets. GCS has that capability. So uh, in a future video, I'll cut uh, the Excalibur and show you how to cut it and frost the facets. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. I've enjoyed my journey to learn all about GCS and I found GCS easy to learn. Learn, not master, as I'm very, very far from mastering GCS. I hope you give GCS a try. I feel that I'm cutting gemstones a little bit better. They're slightly brighter than they would have been because um, I checked them in GCS and I see if I can tweak them a tiny bit just to get a little better performance out of them before I cut them. So GCS is working for me and I hope it works for you. Please let me know in the comments about your experience with frosting facets. And as always, happy fasting, everyone. Mm -hmm.